Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with... Devin. <laughs> Devin. Or, on Twitch, you, you can find in the description his, uh, his Twitch channel, DC7. That's 7 with a 7. Alright, uh, this is a concoction that... Uh, I guess maybe I brought it up and then he actually threw the thing together. We worked on it together, but I think it's more so him. But you can definitely feel the flavor uh, that I gave it right here. <laughs> Polymorph, uh, for quite a while, was kind of my, kind of my jam. Um, I think that I brought up at some point, hey, what if we did a Polymorph deck while I was on that kick with Polymorph? What if we did a Polymorph deck that had the tokens as the, the main plan? And I said, uh, we'll have just one godless shrine that we could fetch out to flashback Lingering Souls, and you, you took it a step further. You said, what if we... What if we just use the black for other stuff, and suddenly, this was born. <laughs> Alright, so would you, uh, or how would you like to get started? Alright, well we'll start with the one drops over here. Alright. We've got six hand disruption spells, three thought seize, three inquisition. As always, this is flexible and depending upon your meta, but mm -hmm. uh, we've got a lot of aggro, a lot of infect, um, and a some burn at, at our current meta, so... You know, I was running four Thought Season 2 Inquisition, but we definitely do ourselves a lot of damage over the course of the game, so mm -hmm. going down on Thought Seasons is, is kind of where I'm shifting to on that. Uh, four Path to Exile, just a great removal spell. Um, and you have how many different arts for Path to Exile? I have three different arts at the moment. Very nice. Got the my favorite, Rebecca Gway mm -hmm. foil promo. Got the regular version, and we've got the F&M promo. Nice. Very nice. And then, uh, yeah. Ah, there we are. So, those are the one drops. Some pretty efficient disruption. Mm -hmm. Pretty good for a black and white deck. Next, we've got some some threats. We've got Raise the Alarm, which is probably the worst token maker, but it's still playable just because it's two drop, two tokens. Um, you can ambush things like Glistener Elves and you know whatever else you want to get in the way of. Bitter Blossom is kind of a really slow engine, but over the course of a game, it, it can create you five, you know, five or six tokens. I've had, I think eight was the most a Bitter Blossom has ever made me, but of course that loses you eight life, so they better be doing you some work. And they I, do. I think especially... seriously, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I think it's like a fifth or a sixth of our meta is in fact now. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty crazy. <laughs> so that card is really good where we are. Yeah. Yeah, they just keep jump blocking all day. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to the Intangible Virtues, which is actually a new addition, because I didn't think it would be that good since our main plan is Polymorph. I had actually four Serum Visions. Um, but Serum Visions didn't really... It didn't fill the role that we we wanted it to, because we were taking so much damage from Shock Lands, turn one, turn two, turn three, mm -hmm. whatever. But we really just want more power on the board, more blocking power and more attacking power. And that's where Intangible Virtue comes in. It turns I, all of your tokens into serious threats. Absolutely. Uh, the deck having two main ways to win is really, I think, what made the the, the choice to uh, have Serum Visions there. To the extent that you're trying to be a combo deck, and we'll get to you guys in just a moment, but to the extent that you're trying to be a combo deck, Serum Visions helps you to find the pieces more readily. To the extent that you're trying to be a an aggro, mid-range, tempo, whatever deck, Intangible Virtue is the better card, and if you are not being so much of a combo deck, if this is just, oops, I win, then Intangible Virtue lets you get through that uh, more easily, right? Yeah, I found out in a lot of my games that I didn't even care that much about Polymorph. It's just that, oh, they're tapped out, now I can play Polymorph, but I wouldn't always play it on turn four. Um, it would often just be an opportune time to play it, and then I'd play it, and they wouldn't see it coming, and... You know, they just died at Emrakul swinging. Mm -hmm. But anyway, as far as the two drops go, the last um, this is also a new addition, Zealous Persecution. There are a lot of one-toughness creatures hanging around our card shop, so that'll take care of them and also buff ours, you know. Kind mm -hmm. of a mini, quick, intangible virtue type of thing. Um, Lingering Souls. Probably the best token maker <laughs> in Magic right now. You get four one ones for the price of one card. If they have Lightning Bolt... They're four fawning themselves. <laughs> it's right. a great card, and it it doesn't even really come out that take take that long to deploy. Even though it's five mana total, you divide it up. Mm -hmm. You all know why lingering souls is amazing. That's right. When you can say seriously, 
Lightning Bolt is bad against this, and you're right. That says something about the card. Yeah. Now, overall, with the amount... I mean, Lightning Bolt is the most played card in oh, yeah. modern. So if oh, you yeah. have a deck that's good against Lightning Bolt, you're doing something right. That's right. And next is Spectral Procession. It's a little bit smaller. Uh, you know, one fewer token than Lingering Souls. But the mana is ridiculously hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, most of our lands produce white, though. So uh, we're kind of looking to play that on turn three. It's, it's definitely not impossible, but... Um, Turn four is more of a guarantee. And then, on the on the one hand, we have all these little white weenies, and on the other hand, we have the flying spaghetti monster. All Do right. you mind if I explain this one? Uh, go ahead. All right. So, you'll notice that the only actual creature that we have in the deck is Emrakul. Everything else is only a creature while it's on the battlefield, but they're actually all just non-creature spells. Emrakul is the only creature. Uh, the flying spaghetti monster. <laughs> Cthulhu over here is the only creature. Now, Polymorph is a fun card. Polymorph says that you get to destroy a creature, that's alright. Uh, can't be regenerated, that's whatever. Uh, its controller, you, reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Well, lo and behold, we have only one creature card. You'll always hit your Emrakul. As long as you still have at least one Emrakul left in your deck, you will get a 15-15 flying, I would say uncounterable, but that's kind of beside the point at this point, um, protection from colored spells, annihilator 6, keeps going back into your deck when it gets killed, yada yada yada, you get that guy. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. I like to compare it to Splinter Twin in that you are dropping a 4 mana sorcery speed card to win the game. Um, in a way, ours is a little bit more consistent. Look at all these tokens that we have. So the creature side of ours is a little bit easier to get, but on the other hand, Twin kills you on the same turn, this kills you a turn later, unless we suddenly decide to change it to some uh, quicken shenanigans. Uh, it kills you the turn after. Unfortunately, we can't give Emrakul haste, barring Lightning Greaves or Swift Foot Boots or something silly like that. Um, yeah, occasionally you can use Polymorph to get yourself out of a tight spot by hitting your opponent's creature if you absolutely need to. The only time I've ever tried that on camera, I hit a Tassiker into a Tassiker. That is not how it's supposed to work, but that's my luck, I suppose. A fun little thing about Polymorph, if they bring in Graft Digger's Cage against you, you say, Oh no, I can't use Polymorph. But now it's a 4-mana removal spell. Yep. It says destroy target creature. They can't, they can't be regenerated. Yep. And I've actually I used two polymorphs to stay in a game where mm -hmm. he had a graphic riskage and it helped me survive. That's right. You're often when you go to sideboards, if they see the polymorph combo, you expect that they'll bring in Grafdigger's Cage, but if you still have the combo and they brought it in, you can still use polymorph. You're absolutely right. Odds are this is just going to be a dead card, but maybe you don't care. Okay, you probably care a little bit, but <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Well, it, I mean, four mana when your curve goes up to three on every other thing mm -hmm. is it's totally fine. You have your tokens in play, and you just need to kill a significant blocker or whatever. That's right. Some tips and tricks. You can thought seize yourself to get an Emrakul out of your hand if you absolutely need to. We only have two Emrakuls, but if both of them are lodged in your hand, you can't polymorph. Or you can, and you just won't hit anything. Uh, so if you need to get an Emrakul out, you can thought seize yourself if you just absolutely have to. And it just shuffles back into your library thanks to the uh, anti-reanimator -re text at the bottom. That's right. I, one thing that I like most about Polymorph Emrakul in a deck like this is, especially if they don't see the combo coming, they're siding in their removal. They're siding in mass removal, Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, Damnation, Anger of the Gods, uh, their own zealous persecutions perhaps, and they're going to try to wipe your field because spot removal is bad against you, but mass removal is great. Uh, all of that, however, is sorcery speed, which means that if they try to do that against an Emrakul, uh, that, well, they can't do that against Emrakul. Um, so, in a way, the polymorph combo helps you, helps to fight that kind of uh, sideboard package that the opponents could bring in. Uh, especially if it's the damage-based mass removal, like Anger of the Gods or Zealous Persecution. That's well, not really damage, but toughness-based, let's say. Right, the question is, do I side out my lightning bolts? Because it counters Polymorph on the one hand, but on the other hand, you're just going to die to a boatload of tokens mm -hmm. if you're just trying to kill them with Lightning Bolts. Um, and some people side out Path, and then you have a free, free way 
Uh, yeah. You know, you have a free path to victory by playing That's it. Polymorph. Path is some ridiculous value for you. They lose a card, you lose half a card, maybe At a quarter worst. of a card, and get a land. That's that's value. And it certainly doesn't work against Emrakul. If right. you didn't know that. <laughs> now, you're not just polymorphing tokens. I'll let you take this part as well. There is a small backup plan of man lands. Right now, we have Celestial Colonnade and Creeping Tar Pit um, in the Esper colors that can act as targets for Emrakul. Also, just late game value. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten to attack with Creeping Tar Pit, but Celestial Colonnade's a little slow for this deck. I think I'll be changing it out in it for something else. Something um, like uh, Windbrisk Kites? Yeah. Um, we wanted to put in Windbrisk Kites here because, you know, if you get Emrakul under one of those things, it's <laughs> even better than polymorphing for it because you get to take an extra turn. Yep. Um, and obviously we're going to have three or more creatures attacking, so activating it won't be too much of a problem. Mm -hmm. um, and it's perfect because it's white and we can play Spectral Procession on turn three. Um, that's that's kind of the weakness of creeping tar pit here, but it's such a good like just kill a planeswalker. Mm -hmm. It's only three mana activate um, that we decided to keep it in. Um, Vault of the Archangel. This card is incredibly clutch when you're racing. Yep. Um, versus other tokens list versus siege rhinos versus tarmogoyfs things like that. Tassigers. You just give them death touch and they're gone. They're Go dead. to town. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of first strike in modern. Um, so Death Touch is really good. And the lifelink part, it really helps you recover from all those Bitter Blossom hits and all those Thoughtseize loss, losses of life and shocking mm -hmm. yourself and fetching. You, I've, I've, uh, I've got myself down to one life against Infect. Yep. Um, just from my own damage. <laughs> and I managed to pull it out, but I might have just died to my own Bitter Blossom against a deck that doesn't deal damage. And that would have been embarrassing. So we like to keep... The, Arca the Vault of the Archangel in here. We're probably looking to put one or two more in there, but we haven't come across any yet. Fair enough. Maybe not too overloaded because of Spectral Procession, though, right? Um, I Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'd like to see. I think two is at least the amount we want, All but right. it, it could even be three. Fair enough. Because, I mean, I could even take out, like, Creeping Tar Pit or a Watery Grave, I and agree. I don't think I need two Watery Graves. In fact, all these mm -hmm. fetch lands are kind of... I, I think, ideally, I'd do something like this. Maybe, like, two Wimbrus Kites and, like, a Vault and, like, an Isolated Chapel just to reduce the damage and mm -hmm. increase the speed, uh, you know, we want our Wimbrus Kites in there. All right. And we've got eight fetches. Um, obviously, Air Mace is not the ideal. Marsh Flats is the best fetch that we can get. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got three basics just for path and for fetching for less less damage to ourselves. That's uh, snow-covered islands, snow-covered plains, and that will be a snow-covered swamp. I'll give you a snow-covered swamp so we can just have snow everywhere. All snow basics. That's it. Alright, now for the sideboard. Um, you know, very variable. We have This is one of the most difficult parts to, mm -hmm. to formulate. We have four Leyline of Sanctity because we have such a terrible burn matchup, and also discard because we're kind of a combo deck. Mm -hmm. Well, the discard isn't even that bad against this, like... They take a link and souls while we flash it back. Our, we have so many interchangeable parts that it's really only good against the combo. But we still don't want to want to uh, be targeted for discard. Yeah. Um, but it's it's mostly for burn, and we have two Sony silences for affinity, uh, batter skull versus control. But you know, not really good against like Tassigers and Gurmag anglers, but some other kind of control deck, or just a grindy matchup, maybe mm -hmm. like a, a collected company type deck where they don't really have an answer to Batter Skull and you know their creatures aren't that strong, so you Batter Skull actually matters. You're right, you were talking about throwing it onto a Flying Spirit for five every turn with Vigilance and Lifelink. Yeah, yeah. Al also Intangible Virtue buffs the germ tokens. That's so right, yeah. <laughs> there give you it go. double Vigilance. Um, <laughs> So we have Holy Day here, which is something I just came up with because there's so much infect. Mm -hmm. You know, they go for two pump spells, three pump spells, and you just play Holy Day, and you just two or three for one them. There you go. And they usually don't see it coming. They're expecting something that they can protect their creature from, like a path to exile. But that one white mana represents something completely different. Now, I, I mentioned Ethereal Haze. It's pretty similar. The only difference is that 
Instead of preventing combat damage, it prevents damage that creatures would deal. Like you mentioned earlier, there's there's not really a good pinger, not, not even one good pinger these days, but just in case it comes up, uh, it does make potentially a difference. I'm trying to think of any prodigal... No, there's probably not really a time when it would come up, but that is something that could. It's a... Uh, I think that it's strictly better, right? Ethereal Haze? Uh, over Holy Day? Instead of combat damage, it's creature damage? It's possible, yeah. Hmm. Per perhaps maybe you have pingers that you want to there deal damage. <laughs> what deck? What deck? Uh, who knows. Alright, so next, you uh, you have Strip um, Mine. I mean, there's uh, a ghost quarter, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, you know, Primeval Titan... Mm -hmm. you know, I'm tapping your land shenanigans with the Amulet of Vigor decks. And uh, Ghost Cooler just kind of interrupts them by killing their bounce land. Mm -hmm. And that can slow them down enough for you to get in there. And then we've got four paths, so that also slows them down. So that's yeah. pretty much our game plan against them. We can't really stop them from going off. We can just kill them before they do. There you go. Um, you uh, you were talking about slaying ink moths with Infect or you know shutting Tron down. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, Tron and... Uh, and in fact, really, and and probably affinity even. Yeah. Um, take their one colored source or uh, kill their man land. There you go. Ghost Quarter has a lot of utility, and you can just swap it out with like I've been swapping it out for Celestial Colonnade. Also, in the control matchup, um, you can even add it in as the twenty uh, third land, there you and go. you can. That's how you can play your battle school a little easier. Now, uh, these are some anti burn cards. Yeah. In addition to the ley lines. Um, you know, this is great. I like I like this card a lot. I'm glad I get to play it. Um, you know, you're being attacked by a Goblin Guide and a Swift Spear. You say, okay, I'm going to fog the Swift Spear and kill the Goblin Guide. <laughs> um, so it's just a cool little way to divert their own damage. Yeah. Or even, you know, from a Lightning Bolt or whatever. You can kill their guy. Now, what is Rest for the Weary? Rest for the Weary is a nifty little life gain card. Landfall, you gain 8 life. Oh. And with 8 fetches, I think Landfall is pretty easy to achieve. Huh. Especially since it's a 2-drop, you probably won't be out of lands by the time you are able to cast it. So this is this deck's Feed the Clan at instant speed, basically. Right. Very nice. Well, I believe Feed the Clan is an instant. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, you're right. It's, it doesn't give you as much life as Feed the Clan. Mm-hmm. But uh, I guess that's the price you pay for not having a ferocious... <laughs> Um, anyways, more cards that can also fight burn. Dispel, Dispel, and Spell Pierce. Um, Dispel is great because we're a combo deck, and if we decide to protect our combo, we can with uh, two of Dispel. And the Spell Pierce is good against like Planeswalkers or uh, uh, you know other counter spells. Yeah. Weirdly enough, I guess the Spell Pierce is also uh, pretty good against you. It's kind of better for Spike against most of what you're doing. Yeah. Everything we, but... We were literally casting no creatures. <laughs> That's true. If we're casting Emrakul, we have a weird game going on. Yeah. We, so, I, I can't act... Unless there's there's an Urborg in play, and I don't sap okay. most of my fetches. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> Now, there is one teeny tiny little conspiracy thing that I have going on. You can probably tell by the arts what my conspiracy is. This bunny is, it's not this guy over on the right turning into the bunny. It's the bunny turning into the guy on the right. See, like, the stick hands and this whole guy looks almost like a stick, like a literal stick figure. And their body positions are pretty similar. Yeah. Half-Life 3 confirmed. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well... Alright, is there anything else that you'd like to say about this? Um, this Esper this deck will keep evolving because yeah. you know, we're still testing, but any updates, we, we'll probably put them up on the channel. Absolutely. And if you see me at the top 8 of the next uh, you know, Southeastern Grand Prix, there we go. give me a shout out. Yes, oh yeah. And then there's a little... This is the Easter egg that's been at the bottom of the screen the whole time. Oh, it's, it's my little daughter's uh, bear. Well, it's say not hi. An Easter egg now. Well, no, I guess it's not. Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough of that. Thank you very much for watching. This is T1 Glistener Elf and uh, DC7, that's 7 with a 7, <laughs> signing out. Take care.